Hello everyone and welcome to Self Empowerment TV. The following interview that I did with uh, my special guest Paige Bartholomew uh, wasn't able to capture properly on video for some reason. However, the audio was maintained and so the following interview is going to be that kind of a slideshow uh, presentation slash audio interview with my special guest Paige Bartholomew. Hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Namaste. Hello everyone and welcome to Self Empowerment TV. I'm your host Brad Johnson. Of course, with me today I have a very special guest. This is Paige Bartholomew. And Paige, thank you very much for being part of Self Empowerment TV today. Brad, thank you so much for having me. Absolutely, it's going to be a blast. And I'm just going to give a brief introduction to Paige here. And uh, Paige Bartholomew is a love worker with a mission to help people of Earth make the shift into true comfort and peace. She is a graduate student at St. Edwards University in Austin, Texas, studying to become a licensed psychotherapist and, a current specializing, and currently specializing in the healing of trauma through her studies at the Somatic Experiencing Trauma Institute. She has been a devoted speaker of Sufism for 14 years and earned the station of Sufi master te teacher in the Shadhulia order. I hope I pronounced that right. Uh, Paige writes uh, passionately about healing and spiritual issues and is committed to authentically speaking her truth in a world that does not always support it. Her first book is nearly is nearing publication. Paige's life work is about moving toward the realization of world peace through the healing of the individual heart. And of course, you can visit Paige, uh, Paige's Facebook page at uh, facebook.com slash the revolution of evolution and of course you can check out Paige's YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Paige Bartholomew. All right, well, Paige, this is quite a this is quite a resume, and it's quite an amazing thing. Um, I remember, of course, stumbling across your videos, and one of the uh, interesting videos that kind of caught my eye too is what you were talking about the the four levels of the heart. Um, and of course, I, I think when people kind of look at that, they may not be too sure in regards to what you mean by the four levels. Would you be able to give uh, information in regards to what you mean by this? Yeah, um, this teaching comes from uh, Sufism, so. Um, all that I've learned from Sufism is what I'm talking about here. The, the four levels of the human being are the ego, the heart, the soul, and the unity. And it's really all one person, but we have different parts of ourselves that have different functions in the world. And so each of these different parts are going to go out into the world and have a different way of relating to it, have a different way of reporting back to our being. Mm -hmm. uh, the ego is, you know, the the ego gets a really bad rap, and it's really not—it's really not a negative thing at all. In fact, we we can't live without one in this world. We we need it. Mm -hmm. um, we need it in order to be able to work and take care of children and socialize and have separate lives from each other. We need it so that we don't bump into things in the night. You know, we we have to have a separate self in the world. That's right. Uh, yeah, and so. The idea is to is to really find the pure ego, the purified ego in ourselves, and and um, that comes about by by knowing what the ego really needs. Mm -hmm. It needs to have its needs met, and so you know the best way that I like to talk to people about that is to just simply to look to the body. Mm -hmm. So the body has wisdom, the body has needs. And it can tell you what it's needing. And when you're really in, in um, you know, resonance with your own body and moving with it in, you know, sort of in, in beauty, then your ego is going to also be purified. It's, it's really one and the same thing, the body and the ego. Absolutely. And, of course, just for my own guidance as well, too, like the ego itself is that of a grounding device. It maintains the continuity in this reality to function, to actually allow yourself to have such a life. And so there is really no idea, from my own perspective, of, of course, ridding the ego. It's all about bringing it to balance, kind of like putting it into the green and just seeing exactly that you do have it. But it's the idea of actually having that continuity device of just functioning in a reality such as this so you can live the purpose, go into the experience that you were brought here to experience in that sense as well, too. And I like the way that you put the four levels of the heart. That's, again, very, very simple and very dynamic as well, too, for people to understand on a much broader level. And, of course, um, what you were talking about as well, too, is uh, what you call the healing journey uh, is the same as the awakening journey. Uh, what exactly do you mean by that? Well, um, I think that that in these days there's a lot of talk about awakening and enlightenment, um, and it, it can be a little confusing about well, what exactly is that? Mm -hmm. um, 
every a lot of people really are striving for it, but they may not know what it is. Um, and I, I really think that that the way to w- to wake up is exactly the same thing as when we're doing our healing work. So if we're Whatever that looks like, if you're healing on the level of the body, if you're becoming aware of your body and you're learning how to listen to your body, that is healing work on the level of the body. Mm -hmm. Then you're awakened on the level of the body, which, remember, is also the level of the ego. Of course. Right? So body and ego, it is the same thing. Um, And then, you know, when we're doing our healing work on the level of the heart, so we're... we're, um, learning the needs that we have on our heart level of where do I need love um, where do I need more acceptance um, where do I need where am I do I really feel like I matter do I really feel like I count do I feel like I have a voice all of those are levels of the heart and when we're when we're healing ourselves through those levels then we're going to awaken on the level of the heart mm-hmm. and so similarly with the level of the soul when we're doing our, our soul work, which is um, meditation and prayer, and um, and the soul is very much more subtle than than the ego or the heart, so it's going to be a much more subtle healing process. But there is healing that needs to happen on the level of the soul, and and this is all very individual, of course. Of course, yeah. Each person. So as we're healing these parts of ourselves, we're actually waking up and remembering who we are. And becoming, you know, more whole and integrated. Exactly, and I think you know that's what makes each person unique is their own awakening and their even their own healing uh, differs from each other as well too. I think a lot of people would love to have a universal generic recipe. How do I awaken? How do I heal? How do I do yeah. this? How do I do that? Well, again, yeah. it all depends on that different particular type of flavor that uh, someone chooses to actually have to actually consider that form of the awakening. Uh, as well as the healing as well too. Do you feel you work with a lot of people? Do they feel like they like when people do approach you? Do they feel like they want like kind of like an ultimate answer, something that seems kind of generic that they could kind of relate to, or is is it kind of a challenge at times to really express the uniqueness that they have as well too to get into that alignment? You know, I think people really do get it um, that this is a unique journey. Mm-hmm. Um, people, people, most people are hungry to know themselves. Right. And, um, you know, when you sit down and you just really, really listen to someone and you listen to their heart and their fears and their needs and their wounds and their hopes, you know, this is, this is how you sort of grasp on to the, to the rope and pull yourself up. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, I, and, and I think that when we can be that for each other, I call that being earth, yes. being the earth for each other. Mm-hmm. When we're when we are that for each other, then we're we're helping each other to awaken. Absolutely. And and Absolutely. Th- there's this, you know, synchronicity that happens and people feel that. They know that. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And I think that's the thing too is like people are starting to become more aware of their awareness really and uh, you know not really to know that you know the universe is not generic it's not that one answer fits all type thing it is actually something that you're actually going through your own personal experience your own personal journey to help accelerate yourself so I love the way you put it of course perfect (laughs) Um, of course um, transforming darkness uh, is simply an act of radical acceptance and this is something that you have talked about as well too about the transformation of darkness of people who have this dense energy um, who are looking to actually shed this energy and come more into that, I guess you could say, of a lighter state of being. Uh, would you like to elaborate on this a bit? Yeah. Um, this is really a, a close... I really love this topic. Um, you know, I, I think one thing that is so special about this time, here we are in 2011, um, is is that the, that the darkness is not feeling quite so dense mm-hmm. for people. Um, it, if you ask people who are sort of on a healing path or a spiritual path, ask them, it, is it feeling as dense to you as it did back in the 80s? <laughs> and most everybody's going to say, no, no, yeah. it's a whole different ball game. Exactly. Things are feeling fa- you know, faster, time feels faster. So when, when we're talking about that, the dense, dark energies, we're really, they're really moving faster now. So that's one piece. Um, but, but how to transform dense energies? It's, it's not complicated, and it's not scary. Um, there's not some demon monster out in the universe that wants to eat us up, you know? It's really everything exists inside of our own heart. Mm-hmm. Everything, 
everything we see is a projection of our own being. That's right. So if I see something or perceive something that feels bad or scary or dark, and believe me, I, I do have these experiences. I, I have to do my work too, just like everyone else. <laughs> um, but, I've, but I've learned that, that when I can really get to know that thing that's so, so scary to me, really just have the courage, and sometimes I'm shaking to the core mm -hmm. when I'm trying to do this work, but if I can just have the courage to just keep looking, just keep looking at it and, and learning about what is this really about, what is this projection really about that's coming from somewhere in me, and I'm not so bad and scary, and so maybe I can love that too. Right. And so it's this, you know, sometimes it's a slow process of back and forth, just a little bit at a time. Can I accept this? Just a little bit more, and um, really bring it, you know, bringing it into myself a little bit more each time is, which is what happens. So, um, in fact, in the shamanic tradition, they call it soul retrieval, mm -hmm. because you're actually taking this projection that you've pushed out of yourself, and you're bringing it back in. So mm -hmm. you're retrieving yourself. So that's how we transform darkness. It doesn't have to be, you know, sage and smudge sticks and all this stuff. It's really about radical acceptance of bringing what is out there and scary back into the, the love. Exactly. And I think acceptance, of course, is the big key for that as well, too. It's the more you accept yourself and actually come into the alignment of full trust of being as well, too, the more easier the journey it is to you actually can uplift into more of a, a spiritual nature, to more of actual true harmony with the self. And there's always going to be those voids, too, I think, where people are always going to experience it. What about this possession I have? What about this person? You know, maybe perhaps there's the idea of the feeling of attachment. Perhaps there's a feeling that there is some form of possession that, in that sense, tries to fulfill a void within themselves, but they know deep and down they can't. And again, a lot of people can have this baggage that they carry around as well, too. Do you get that kind of uh, feeling of severity at times as well, too, where people, they know they want to fulfill themselves on a spiritual level, but they're always having those kind of challenges as well, too, you know, whether it be possessions or relationships or anything like that. Um, is there anything that you've kind of personally experienced in regards to people who just kind of don't want to let that go, in a sense, but do want to evolve as well? Uh, you know, I don't know anybody that's not struggling like that. Mm -hmm. I think we really all are. Even even the, the, the teachers that we go and pay money to listen to their lectures, really, they're still doing this work, too. It may be a subtler level mm -hmm. of it. But they're, everyone is doing this work because, yes. because we're evolving the planet. That's mm -hmm. what we're here to do. So, um, yeah, I think, I think that, that people do have all of the things that you just described. And I think it's a re really a relief to hear that even the people who we look up to, um, the, spirit the spiritual gurus and the, the teachers, they're, they're doing the same work you're doing. Mm -hmm. They're doing the same work I'm doing. And so we're really all on the same page here. You know, there's, there's no... Um, you know, there's, there's no reason to feel intimidated or, oh, I... I can't do that work. Yeah. I can't, I can't ever, I would never be able to achieve what that spiritual person has achieved. That's not, that's not true anymore. 